Thank you all for coming to listen to me talk today. There's a lot of material to cover, so um, I'm going to do the best I can to get through this. Uh, I'm going to have a bunch of text in the beginning. There's only one picture in the first few slides, so I hope you hold on for a little bit and we can get through this. Um, and definitely, because this tool that we're making is a collaborative real-time tool, it's very hard to demonstrate this just by speech and by still slides. So I definitely come ask me later on for a demo. We have a poster, and you can just grab me, and I can give you a live demo and show you what everything uh, is going on in our tool. Anyways, so I want to start by just framing before I show you the tool, I want to frame the problem that we're trying to solve to give you a bit of context, okay? So we start with our problem. And our problem is that uh, we have, this is a gene annotation file from, you know, from the go, the Gene Ontology Consortium. And this is sort of, besides the ontology data that we have, this is the bread and butter data that the Gene Ontology Consortium deals with. And it's essentially, you have terms, you have gene gene products, you have an evidence code, and you have the you know, who made the annotation, and so on and so forth. And this is the kind of data that we collect and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and when you look at this data, and you probably have, you know, large text files yourself, when you look at this data, these are just, it's a series of disassociated statements, and there's only so much you can do with this, right? You can say this statement, this statement, this statement, but how do they relate to each other, right? And this is a fundamental problem, right? So we have large groups of disassociated statements. I've had way too much caffeine at this point, forgive me. We have large numbers of disassociated statements, and, but it doesn't give us a really good picture of the biological, biological processes that we're trying to model. Um, so in real systems, what we want is sort of a, a better picture, what we have on the right rather than what we have on the left. And so we're trying to solve the problem of giving this data more structure. Um, in the Go world, like we've tried various things, if you're familiar with the GAF files, like more and more columns get added, column 16, where there's like little tiny graphs inside, but it's still just not enough to be able to do what we want to do. Um, another interesting point is, is that if you do try to use the ontology to model some of this information, it can also start sort of uh, uh, affecting and distorting how you design your ontology in order to try to capture this information, but it's not quite the right approach. So our solution is a new tool called Noctua, okay? Collaborative editing of RDF instance graphs for modeling biological processes. And that's a lot there, so I'm gonna to try to unpack this as we go. Um, and so first I'd like to cover modeling, what we're doing in the Geontology Consortium now to try and model the data better, move away from that tabular format into a more graph-oriented format. I'll then give a quick overview of the tool, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the interfaces that we offer and development of the tool, which is where a lot of the exciting stuff is going on, in my opinion. So first, let's talk about modeling. So first, I'm going to go over real fast what the LEGO abstraction is that we've started uh, trying to use. Um, and I'd just like to note that behind this LEGO, we're using uh, OWL. So OWL is, sort of, is a ontology web language is it's basically a more graphy way of representing your knowledge. And so we're trying to give more structure than just sort of the tabular format we've been using up until now. And I also want to point out, and I'll make this point again later on, Noctua is at its core an abstract graph editor. So the front end that I'm going to be showing you is the interface that we're going to be working with uh, for uh, gene ontology annotators in, in the consortium. But you can also think of this as a general graph workflow. So you might be able to apply some of this stuff to what you're doing. So moving on. So first picture. So let me introduce the anaton, which is the fundamental unit in the LEGO annotation. And so what it is is a gene or gene product. Here we have it listed as active entity. Its function, its location in the cell for the gene ontology and what process it's part of. So, um, and the idea is, is each one of these is sort of a fundamental annotation brick, and then we're gonna chain these together to make uh, more complicated models of biology. So, the example I'm gonna use throughout is uh, BFA1 inhibits TEM1 in exit from mitosis. So, let's just start matching these things together. So, we have the, uh, I can see it over here too. We have the, the gene product here is BFA1, right? So enable I BFA1. Uh, it occurs in mitotic spindle pole, which is location, and the function is GTPase inhibitor activity. Okay, so hopefully you can see how these are working. Are you know this is the same thing here, and so in this case the process this is part of exit from mitosis, 
And so as we build up our model then, we can now say, we can now have this sort of one group of statements, which is really like three ontology statements, and we can associate them with three other ontology statements. So you can see sort of a, a group of three lines from a GAF and another three lines from a GAF are sort of, you're getting a higher level structure here where we have GPTA's inhibitor activity directly inhibits GPTA's activity enabled by TEM1. So you can see that now we have a much more graph mo graphy model than we did before. These are no longer just disassociated lines in a large table. We actually have um, higher level structure now. So I just want to pause here for a moment, and we're going to expand out again so you can actually see the part. So earlier on, I was mentioning, uh, so enabled by BFA1, right? So this is just, it's just all nodes and edges, nodes and edges under the hood, right? So GPTA's activity enabled by TEM1, right? GPTA's activity, part of exit from mitosis. And so using the Snoctua tool, we have a general graph editor as well as something to help curators uh, do more complicated uh, things. And as well, along the right side, you can also see that we are um, also modeling our evidence using ontologies now as well. Um, and so here we have, there's a lot to say about evidence. What you see on the left is our evidence model that we're rolling out right now. It's very complicated, I won't go into that, but I do wanna talk a little bit about how we're capturing uh, curator uh, evidence and curator data. So for every action that someone performs on a graph, so we can have multiple users working on the same graph, for every um, action that's performed on the graph, we're capturing the date that was done, the person as stored by an ORCID ID or some other uh, global identifier. And right now we're expanding out to be able to deal with uh, spans and external IDs and external IDs. And so the idea would be someone who's working in TechPress of Central or something could have, you know, highlight a piece of a paper, you know, in this paper, this line, and then be able to refer to that. So we're moving away from just having a, you know, a vague PubMed ID and actually being able to get down into very fine detail about the kind of stuff that's being captured by curators. As well, we're working on something like just calling it hats here, where in addition to just having, um, you know, a unique user identified as creating an annotation, we're also going to be able to attach other things like, you know, what funding did they use to do this? Uh, you know, what's the particular hat they were wearing when they made this annotation? And with this very flexible evidence model and graph model that we're using, there's a lot more we can start attaching permanently onto these graphs. So it gives us a lot more freedom than we used to have with the uh, uh, tab delimited format. So now let's actually get to the application. So a quick overview. So Noctua is hopefully a modern web application for modeling biology. We've used, built from the ground up very recently. We're using all the latest uh, techniques and tools that we've been able to get our hands on and not a lot of legacy to work with. Um, and hopefully by modeling this this way, we're able to escape the pitfalls of tabular models that have been sort of haunting a lot of uh, curation up until present. As well, this is a collaborative environment. And again, please come for a demo later on. Um, and you can watch two people build a model together at remote locations at the same time. It's very, it's very nice, you know, spooky action at a distance. Um, as well, I'd like to mention uh, the tooling and data abstraction integration stuff that we've got working. So I'm just gonna go really quick through these. Uh, so this is the main window of Noctua. We've got nothing there. We're gonna just go through a quick example. Um, we wanted a video, but we couldn't really trust that with the PDF here. So. Uh, First thing you do is you can see along the autocompletes along the left, we're inputting uh, the, uh, the function, we've input the uh, uh, activity, the gene product, and now we're just inputting location and autocomplete comes down, you select your location, you hit the button, and then you have an anaton uh, appear on your screen. This is the fundamental unit we're using to uh, make these annotations now. Um, as well, we can move forward, let's just we went through the process again. We used the form boxes. We got another anaton. And now we're going to start connecting the two together. So just by dragging from one anaton to another, we we're able to create a relation between the two and select the evidence code that we'd like to use this, in this case, directly inhibits. And now we have BFA1 directly inhibits the GPTA's activity of TEM1. Right? So we're able to say much richer things much more quickly. And just moving on, here's the completed example in the interface. So very nice. Please come and see us for a demo later on. And once you've got these building blocks that you're able to chain together, 
you can see we can start building much more complicated things. So this is uh, PT, PRH, uh, intestine inflammation in worm. And you can see we're able to capture, you know, there's negative regulation here, directly, direct activation directly inhibits. And so we've got a really good model of biology we're developing at this point. So this is very exciting. And a lot of the curators we've worked with so far have been very excited about being able to capture this much richer uh, biology rather than just sort of having this tabular format. So these are actual curators having an awesome time using our tool. Um, and I just want to highlight again that one of the great things is, uh, for example, when we've had uh, you know, annotation exercises, people will open up a common model and discuss how to annotate it. People sort of throw things out there, add anatons, people try to chain them together, and people can watch and have a discussion live with each other as they build up these models of biology. And I think that's just an incredibly fun and exciting thing. If there's a demo, you can just drop in on someone else and, and watch them live. So it's very nice. You can actually watch biology you know, information capture get done real time uh, with Noctua. Uh, so let's talk about the, uh, the nuts and bolts in here of the software. So multi-tiered client server architecture, there's actually several sets of those. We have different clients for the front end, so it's not just all gene ontology all the time. I wanna show you a couple of different interfaces that we have very briefly. Um, and we're using HTTP and JavaScript API. So this is something hopefully developers can just pick up and work with as well. So if there's a front end that you wanna build for this system, we're trying to make that easy for you. As well, if you don't wanna develop like a whole uh, front end for yourself, we have a federation and token system that we try to make it very easy to be able to communicate with our system. You just log into the system, get a token, and you're able to uh, do something Galaxy-like. And I'll show that in a second. As well, we also have uh, query and extraction services that I'll briefly go over. So let's just climb in there. So I'm not actually gonna go through this. We're gonna break it down, but I just wanted to highlight the three-tiered architecture here. We have the end client, which is either, which is going to be sort of the, the uh, application that you saw earlier with the graph and the drag and the drop. Um, there's other clients as well. We have a middle layer, Barista here, and that's the communication coordination server. And then we have Minerva, the uh, Java backend. So let's just go through this real fast. The client uh, that we wrote uh, for the graph is uh, JS Plum and Bootstrap. Uh, that's very nice. Uh, all of these are just uh, JavaScript libraries. You can grab them online. Everything's on GitHub and it also communicates with our solar, uh, named Golar here for the gene ontology, our solar server to do autocomplete. Um, and you can have any, any combination of things. It's all uh, plug and play. You can mix and match. Uh, here's the graph client again, as I showed you earlier. This is uh, a client we have uh, that's being built for the Monarch Initiative, uh, rare disease phenotypes. And this is, you can see, a tabular for people who maybe don't want to mess around with graphs. We have a, a tabular format for people just to sort of put in phenotype, disease, age of onset. And it builds the same graph model on the back end. The user isn't any of the wiser, but we're still capturing that very rich information. And just for uh, the developers and people who want to build their own stuff, this is just an example of the Repel API we have for it, for manipulating stuff, for prototyping. Very nice. Uh, in the middle, uh, we have Barista, the messaging server. This is written in Node.js, uh, HTTP, both ends. Uh, it also deals with authorization and authentication, so we use Persona for that. Um, user logs in, they receive a token, and then their operations just go, it passes the operations through. Um, and it's built around a command language. So anyone who implements this command language can talk to Barista, you just need the token um, and to get uh, authorization on the system. And the output is also a JSON uh, model. Uh, it's a, sort of a, a JSON version of an OWL subset, and it's just very simple. Nodes, edges, and metadata to go along with it. Everything is done in CommonJS, NPM. Um, I will hurry through the rest of these slides. So direct JavaScript API use, pass the token, use the JavaScript API, you're done. Galaxy-like parameter passing, Basically, we have an endpoint, you have the token, you can just basically push things into this endpoint. I can give you a demonstration of that later on. We're working with TechSpresso Central. We're gonna to try to import some stuff from Reactome and we're also working with Pub Annotation to try to get uh, that working through. Backend is uh, Minerva, J uh, Java, written with the L API. Um, we have reasoners in there. You could do all sorts of great stuff with that. Um, come and talk to me and we can talk more about it. Right now we're just saving files on the file system. Um, but we're looking to go to a graph or triple store very soon. And the pipeline feeds into Amigo. Anyways, 
uh, alternate visualizations, turnkey by Ansible, working with Techspresso, this is being trained on and used right now. So this is something that's in the wild and people are using. Come and talk to us about it. This might work for you. Um, this is our code. I'll end on that slide and just thank you. Bebop, uh, go, go consortium. I'm not actually thanking myself. I'm just saying myself, Susie Lewis, Chris Mungle, and Mooney are here if you want to talk about stuff. Um, please see us and uh, thank you. <laughs>